The author of 72 Reasons to be Vegan, Kathy Freston, isn't vegan. In a recent Instagram post, the author makes a series of confessions about how she is an imperfect vegan. Now, I think that's, an, that's a nonsensical term, right? I think that she is just not vegan. Now, before I go off on why I think she is not vegan, let's first define what veganism means. According to the vegan society, veganism is a philosophy and a way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing or any other purpose. Now, in her post, Gethi writes the following. I have confessions to make. I have an old pair of Uggs that I still wear around the house like slippers. My vegan friend sends me honey that she harvests from her hive every year for Christmas and I enjoy it in my tea. I have jeans that have a leather tag on the back and a hat with a feather tucked into it. I hadn't noticed when I bought it. I have used Botox, which I'm guessing was tested on animals at some point. I have makeup that's not 100% vegan. I bought my two chihuahuas over 20 years ago from a store on Lexington Ave. Five years after our five years after I went vegan, I was overcome with a craving for a tuna sandwich, so I went to Whole Foods and got one to take home so I could eat it in private and see what I'd been missing. This, this is the first paragraph from great Kathy Preston's recent post on Instagram. Now, I don't think that all of it is the problem here, right? For example, she still has the Uggs, right, that she bought a long time ago when she wasn't vegan, presumably, right? And she still continues to use them. Now, I don't see a problem with that, right? Because first of all, she is not uh, paying for the uh, for the exploitation of non-human animals anymore. She had already paid for it. Now, once she went vegan, she couldn't undo it, right? If she threw it away, that exploitation wouldn't go away, right? She she still uses something that was already paid for, so, and she even does it in private, right? She just wears it around the house. So she is not, it's not as if she is encouraging others to do the same, right, by wearing it around in public. But for her to do things like to still consume honey, right, when she doesn't have to, I think that is a problem, right? For her to continue to use makeup when she doesn't have to, uh, like makeup that's not cruelty free, when there are alternatives, I think that is a problem. Right. Uh, I don't see a problem with her having a pair of jeans with a leather tag on it because again it's been paid for. So there are things here that are that I find problematic and others that I don't. Right. And my issue is with these particular ones, with the use of honey and with the use of non cruelty free makeup, even though she has other alternatives. Right. Oh, by the way, before we proceed, I want to clarify that when I say cruelty-free makeup, I mean it purely in the technical sense of the word, as in cruelty-free meaning not having been tested on animals. Right. That is how cruelty-free is branded. If a product is cruelty-free, it means that it has not been tested on animals. When I say cruelty-free, I do not mean that, uh, like in the literal sense of the word, that it's free from all sorts of cruelty. Right, that's not that's not what I'm talking about. Kathy Preston then goes on to write about how she is not perfect, about how the opening of the heart and reaching the better is a process, and how the path is filled with learning curves, and lust and shame and so on, that she is trying damn hard on her path to kindness and awareness and so on. And she writes about how. Change doesn't come overnight and all sorts of stuff, right? And I think this is where the problem lies, right? Veganism is too often portrayed 
as a matter of kindness and compassion. It's not. It's a matter of justice. Would we ever be fine with an imperfect, imperfect, non-racist? Right? Like if, for example, for example, a white person you met said that, you know, I was raised in this very racist environment. Therefore, I racially abuse um, like a brown person occasionally. You know, I'm not perfect, right? Like, well, I'm trying damn hard to, uh, for in my path to kindness and awareness that the road to uh, opening of the heart and reaching the better is a path filled with shame and lust and uh, cultural adjustments and so on. Would we ever accept such a person? No, right? Because being not racist is not a matter of kindness and compassion. You are not doing a favor to members of other races when you are not being racist, right? It's just the moral baseline. It's the bare minimum, right? Similarly, it goes to uh, our treatment of non-human animals. You are not doing the non-human animals some kind of favor by not paying for their exploitation or by not partaking in their exploitation. You're doing the bare minimum, right? So, Kathy Freston, ma'am, I ask you with my utmost sincerity and kindness, why would you be okay with being an imperfect vegan when you almost certainly wouldn't be okay with someone being an imperfect non-racist? You personally, I'm sure, would never be okay with being an imperfect non-racist, would you? So why would you treat the non-human animals any differently? What is the morally relevant difference between, let's say me, right? I'm a different race from you. Between me and a goat or a chicken or a pig, what is the moral difference between me and them, ma'am? I ask you this with my utmost sincerity. Some people in your comment section have pointed out the flaws in your reasoning. For example, Madison here points out, rightly so, um, I hope those bees don't miss their food over the winter. Using animals as food machines is exploitive, and that's a proper noticing of the implications of your reasoning. Right? This is a very uh, like proper rational uh, reasoning and assessment of the evidence, right? And how did you respond to that? You respond with a very condescending message, with a very condescending response, implying that she was, she was being emotional. I'll read it out. You write, Dear commenter, I hear that you are angry and I am sorry to have provoked you. That's not what's happening here. Right? You write, To me, veganism is about kindness. Both to human and non-human animals. I hope to support and encourage the newly curious and those finding their way and so on. You go on to write that. Right? You, you, uh, you responded to a very calm and rational observation made by someone and dismissed it as some kind of emotional response. My only request to you, ma'am, is that you don't do the same to me. I hope you watch this video in its entirety and I hope that you can respond properly. I'll repeat my question. If you would never be fine with someone being an imperfect non-racist, why would you ever be fine with someone being an imperfect non-speciesist, an imperfect vegan? What is the moral difference between me and a non-human animal? Right? If you wouldn't draw the line, the mo line of moral consideration, at the race level and exclude me, why would you draw on the line of moral consideration at the species level and exclude them? You seem to be really big on kindness, right? So I hope that you can respond to my question with kindness and not with the condescension with which you've responded to others who have pointed out the flaws in your reasoning. Thank you.
I've been Aditya Prakash or Soy Theist. Thank you kindly for the view. Uh, I'd love to know what you think of my video, my thoughts. Uh, leave your comments down below. If you love the video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And thank you kindly for the view. And an extra special thank you to my wonderful patrons on Patreon who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support me too, you can head over to the first link in the description. Uh, you, can, you get perks like early access to my videos, uh, the ability to de uh, decide to vote on which videos I'll be making in the future, and other perks, more details in the link in the description. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.